This video was produced in 1992 by Nordstrom Valves Incorporated. In 2002, FlowServe Corporation acquired Nordstrom Valves through the purchase of the Flow Control Division of Invensys PLC. At that time, Nordstrom Valves, located in Sulphur Springs, Texas, was renamed FlowServe Sulphur Springs Operations. This facility continues to manufacture the same high-quality product, known today as FlowServe Nordstrom Valves. This video continues to address many of the lubricated plug valve and sealant injection products manufactured by FlowServe Sulphur Springs Operations. However, some product may have been modified or new product introduced that is not included. FlowServe Corporation reserves the right to make product modifications that may contradict the contents of this video without notification to its holders. This video is intended as a guide for educational and training purposes only. If the FlowServe Nordstrom Valves product you require troubleshooting and maintenance information on is not included in this video, or if anything in this video is unclear to you, please contact your local FlowServe Nordstrom Valves representative for assistance. Before using or working on any FlowServe Nordstrom valve or other product, the viewer should review and fully comply with the FlowServe Nordstrom maintenance and instruction manuals prepared for each FlowServe Nordstrom valve and to its warning labels and with the viewer's company safety procedures. FlowServe Corporation and its associates cannot be held responsible for any information that is found to be inaccurate or incomplete and are in no way responsible for damage to property or for personal injury or death which may result through the use or misuse of any FlowServe Nordstrom product publication, audio or visual aids. Nordstrom Valves Incorporated is a manufacturer of high-quality iron and steel plug valves. With more than 70 million plug valves in the field and with experience covering more than 70 years, Nordstrom is recognized as today's premier plug valve manufacturer. Nordstrom valves are used in a wide range of applications, such as oil and natural gas production and transmission, and general industrial service. After you have viewed this video, you'll be able to operate and maintain the two main tools used to service Nordstrom valves, the 400D handgun and the Nordstrom hypergun. Each type of Nordstrom plug valve has a tapered plug that fits into a matching seat. The plug rotates through a quarter turn to permit or block flow through the valve. You probably know that these valves are called lubricated plug valves because a thin layer of sealant between the seat and the plug provides a fluid-tight seal. Periodically, more sealant must be injected into the valve to replenish the supply. There's a physical law that describes how this pressurized sealant acts in the valve. It's called Pascal's Law. Pascal's Law states that a unit pressure applied to the fluid contained in a sealed vessel is transmitted uniformly to all areas of the confining surface of the fluid with undiminished force, thus multiplying the force many times. In other words, if a force is applied to a fluid in a confined area, the force will be transmitted equally to every other area of the confined fluid. This means a small force applied to a small area of a confined fluid is transmitted and multiplied. So it applies a larger force to a larger area of the same fluid. For example, suppose 100 pounds of force is applied to a piston attached to a cylinder. If the piston has an area of one square inch, it creates a pressure in the cylinder of 100 pounds per square inch. Now, suppose there's another piston attached to the cylinder. The entire surface of that piston is subject to the pressure of 100 pounds per square inch created by the force on the small piston. If it has an area of 10 square inches, then by Pascal's law, 
the pressure on each square inch produces a force of 100 pounds. Since the area of the piston is 10 square inches, the total force produced on the piston is 1,000 pounds. Using Pascal's law, we can multiply the effect of a small force to generate useful hydraulic forces in sealant injection equipment and in valves. Sealant injection equipment uses a piston to apply pressure to the sealant, and that pressure is transmitted uniformly to all surfaces the sealant contacts. Sealant grooves in the plug and body transmit pressure from the sealant fitting to the bottom chamber. In the bottom chamber, the pressure is applied uniformly to the bottom of the plug. While flow resistance reduces the pressure by the time it gets to the plug, the large area of the plug bottom multiplies the pressure, producing a strong upward force on the plug. The force can be powerful enough to move the plug off its seat during relubrication, making the valve easy to operate. The movement is exaggerated here for illustration purposes. When the plug moves off its seat, sealant can flow into the taper between the plug and body. The sealant can come from both the bottom chamber and from the sealant grooves. The grooves also help renew the sealant film whenever the plug is turned. Sealant injection ensures a drop-tight seal within the valve. The seal is formed by the sealant captured as the plug moves back into the seat. Whenever possible, it's very important to turn the plug back and forth to evenly distribute the sealant over the seating surfaces of the plug and valve body. This should be done whenever a valve is injected with sealant and periodically between injections. Rotating the plug also helps combat corrosion around the valve stem and ensures proper operation of the valve. Regular sealant injection and rotation or exercise of the plug are essential to long valve life and optimum performance. Most valve problems can be directly attributed to failure to regularly inject sealant or exercise a valve. The principle of Pascal's law also enables us to troubleshoot valves when we inject sealant. By observing the pressure it takes to inject sealant, we can infer a valve's condition. This is the Nordstrom 400D handgun. The 400D handgun is the most commonly used tool to inject sealant into Nordstrom valves. The 400D handgun also serves as a diagnostic tool to determine if valves are operating properly. In the next few minutes, you'll learn to identify important parts of the handgun, how to prepare and use the gun to service Nordstrom valves in line and under pressure, and basic handgun maintenance and troubleshooting techniques. There are a number of important 400D handgun parts you need to be able to identify and operate in order to service Nordstrom valves. The gun sealant barrel is designed to accept Nordstrom J-stick or gun pack sealant. A high pressure hose with a giant button head coupler connects the handgun to the valve sealant fitting. The gun handle is attached to the piston of an internal hydraulic pump and operates the pump. A bag in a cylindrical barrel attached to the gun body serves as a reservoir for the hydraulic fluid. The pump mechanism generates hydraulic pressure that is applied to an internal floating piston. The floating piston pushes against the sealant forcing it through the hose and button head coupler into the valve. A gauge indicates sealant pressure in the 400D handgun. As you extend the handle, the hydraulic piston moves out of the hydraulic cylinder. This draws fluid from the fluid bag into the cylinder. Pressing down the handle applies pressure to the fluid, forcing it into the sealant barrel behind the floating piston. A spring-loaded check valve closes to prevent the hydraulic fluid now in the sealant barrel from flowing back into the hydraulic cylinder. An internal relief valve limits the maximum hydraulic pressure generated within the handgun. 
A bypass valve with an external handle lets you relieve pressure in the hydraulic system by letting fluid in the sealant barrel flow back into the fluid bag. You need to be able to perform some tests and maintenance tasks on the 400D handgun to ensure that the handgun is operating properly. Be aware that sealant injection equipment generates extremely high pressures, thousands of pounds per square inch. Fluid streams with that much pressure can cut and tear the skin and permit sealant to enter the body. Always point the coupler, hose, or sealant fitting in the coupler away from you and other people. You should always wear eye protection when performing these maintenance tasks. The most common maintenance problem is the presence of air in the handgun hydraulic system. The handgun's bypass valve seals with a small O-ring. If this seal is damaged, air may enter the hydraulic system. If air is present in the hydraulic system, the 400D handgun may not operate when the hose end of the gun is pointed upwards. Instead of moving the floating piston, the hydraulic system just compresses the air bubbles. To determine if air is present in the hydraulic system and to purge the system of air, first stand the 400D handgun in the vertical position with the hose end up. Open the bypass valve one half turn to ensure the 400D handgun is not pressurized. Do not remove the bypass valve completely or expose the O-ring. Doing so will allow hydraulic fluid to escape, and you might damage the O-ring seal when attempting to place the bypass valve back into the handgun. Unscrew the handle. Unscrew and remove the sealant barrel cap. The hose is attached to this cap. The handle may be used to loosen the sealant barrel cap if necessary. Remove sealant from the sealant barrel. Always dispose of sealant properly in accordance with local, state, and federal laws and your company's procedures. Insert the handle into the sealant barrel and force the piston down until you feel a firm stop. If you feel any sponginess, there is air in the hydraulic system and this air needs to be purged. To purge the air, first, with the handle still in the barrel, turn the handgun over. Next, examine the fluid bag barrel cap, the cap now pointing up. Earlier models of the 400D handgun incorporated a locking screw in this cap. Examine the cap for this screw. If it's present, remove it using an Allen wrench. Failure to remove this locking screw can cause severe damage to the handgun when the fluid bag barrel cap is unscrewed. When you have removed the fluid bag barrel cap, Locate the fluid bag screw and, using an Allen wrench, slowly remove the screw. Let the weight of the handgun press against the handle as the screw is removed. You can add hand pressure if necessary. Be careful. If pressure exists in the fluid bag, hydraulic fluid may squirt out or overflow, causing a mess. As the fluid bag screw is being removed, and force is applied to the floating piston, you should hear a fizzing sound. This indicates that air is escaping. Once the floating piston has been pushed to the bottom of the sealant barrel, fill the fluid bag with Nordstrom hydraulic fluid. Make sure the floating piston is completely pushed to the bottom of the sealant barrel before you add hydraulic fluid. Otherwise, you could overfill the system and damage the handgun. To remove any remaining air from the hydraulic system, operate the handgun pump without the handle several times. Then close and open the bypass valve several times. You may want to set the handgun in this vertical position for a minimum of 30 minutes to allow air to migrate from the fluid. Any additional air will appear as bubbles on the surface of the hydraulic fluid. After 30 minutes, add fluid as necessary to fill the fluid bag. Reinstall the fluid bag screw, complete with O-ring. Reattach the fluid bag barrel cap and the fluid bag locking screw if present. 
You are now ready to load sealant into the 400D handgun. First, remove any hydraulic pressure by closing the bypass valve, then open it one half turn. With the sealant barrel cap removed, use the handle to push the floating piston completely to the bottom of the sealant barrel. You are now ready to load sealant into the handgun. There are two forms of Nordstrom sealant that may be used with the 400D handgun. The J-stick or gun pack sealant encased in plastic. In addition, Nordstrom VPX valve purge, a liquid valve purge you will occasionally use during valve maintenance, comes in gun pack form. Before loading the J-stick, use a screwdriver or similar tool to cut a groove down the side of the J-stick. By creating a path for any air to escape, this groove prevents air from being trapped between the J-stick and the face of the floating piston. To load the J-stick, simply insert it into the sealant barrel. Because the sealant is pliable, heat and handling may change its shape. If the J-stick is out of shape, it may not fit into the sealant barrel. If this is the case, roll the J-stick on a clean, flat surface while flattening it slightly with the palm of your hand. This reduces the J-stick's diameter. Recut the side groove and insert the J-stick into the sealant barrel. If you intend to use gun pack sealant, first examine the sealant barrel cap of the handgun. You should find a nipple which attaches to the T on which the pressure gauge is mounted. This nipple should protrude approximately 3 16 of an inch through the cap to prevent the gun pack bag from being forced into the hose. If not, you must use J-stick sealant or get a replacement nipple. Do not try to extend the nipple by tightening it. Doing so may damage the sealant barrel cap and or the nipple. To load the gun pack, insert it, heat sealed end first, into the sealant barrel. After you've loaded the sealant, replace the sealant barrel cap by screwing on hand tight. Once the 400D handgun has been loaded with sealant and tested for proper operation, retest the gun. Close the bypass valve, then stand the gun hose end up and operate the handle. The hose will stiffen. And you should get a continual pressure rise on the gauge. The gun is now ready to be used to lubricate valves in line and under pressure. Before lubricating any valves, the first step is to clean the face and groove of the valve sealant fitting and check for any damage that might cause it to leak or lose pressure. Fittings are generally exposed to the elements and often take a lot of abuse. First, remove any paint or dirt. If necessary, use a scraping tool or file. Be sure to wipe the fitting clean to be sure it's free of dirt and debris. A file may also be used to smooth any scratches or dents. If the fitting is seriously scratched, pitted, or dented, it must be replaced. Next, attach the giant button head coupler on the handgun to the valve sealant fitting. Slide the coupler completely onto the fitting by rocking up and down. Do not use a left to right motion because the coupler may not completely slide onto the fitting. Now inject sealant into the valve by operating the handgun handle. As you inject sealant, observe the gauge. If the valve is operating properly, the handgun gauge needle should rise and slightly fall as sealant is injected into the valve. The needle will reach a new peak each time the handgun is pumped. Eventually, the gauge needle will reach a plateau. When the valve sealant chamber has filled with sealant, an additional rise in pressure from this plateau will occur until the plug is finally moved off its seat. 
When the plug has moved out of the taper, the gauge needle will begin to fall back. This signals that the valve is full of sealant and the plug has been moved out of the taper as per Pascal's law. The pressure at which this will occur varies from valve to valve. At this point, you should stop operating the handgun. Any further injection of sealant into the valve will only force excess sealant into the piping system. If the valve plug is not tightly seated in the body taper, the gauge needle will reach a plateau, but will not show an additional rise in pressure. Some judgment must be exercised in determining the amount of sealant required to fill a given size valve. Familiarity with valve construction and service conditions will give you a good idea of the necessary volume. Now check the valve for proper operation. If the valve is operating properly, you can remove the giant button head coupler from the valve sealant fitting by first opening the handgun bypass valve. A decrease in pressure will register on the gauge and the coupler can be removed. To save time and repeated effort when you service a large number of valves, open the bypass valve until the gauge pressure indicates zero. Then quickly close the bypass valve. This way, the handgun hydraulic system will remain partially pressurized and it will take fewer strokes to redevelop operating pressure for each valve. Alternatively, you can install a Nordstrom shutoff relief valve at the coupler end of the hose. It relieves pressure at the coupler for easy removal while maintaining pressure in the sealant barrel and hose. You can usually tell when all the sealant has been pumped from the handgun because it will become increasingly difficult to operate the handle. The gauge will not indicate any rise in sealant pressure and may even fall back toward zero. Also, the giant button head coupler normally will become loose on the valve sealant fitting. When these conditions appear, discontinue using the handgun and add sealant. To add sealant, close the bypass valve, then carefully open it one half turn. Even though any remaining sealant may not be under pressure, Hydraulic pressure behind the floating piston may be at a maximum, as indicated by the force it takes to move the handle. Until the bypass valve is opened, do not remove the sealant barrel cap, because pressure could cause the cap to blow off the handgun and cause property damage or personal injury or death. Once the hydraulic pressure has been relieved, remove the handle and the sealant barrel cap. If you're using gun pack sealant, remove the empty bag from the sealant barrel. Dispose of it properly in accordance with local, state, and federal laws and with your company's procedures. Use the handle to push the floating piston to the bottom of the sealant barrel. Load sealant as you normally would. Reattach the sealant barrel cap. And the handle. And close the bypass valve. Sometimes it's necessary to purge any remaining sealant in the T, hose, and coupler. Reasons include incompatibilities between the previous sealant and the new sealant, the presence of valve purge, or valve design considerations such as pressure, temperature, or line media. To purge the system, load the sealant you want to use into the handgun. Remove the giant button head coupler from the hose, or slide a spare sealant fitting into the button head coupler. Operate the handgun to pump the old sealant from the end of the hose through the fitting into a container. You can tell when the new sealant appears by watching the stream. 
When the new sealant appears, stop pumping. Open the bypass valve. Then remove the sealant fitting from the coupler or replace the coupler. A leaking check valve in the 400D handgun will not allow hydraulic pressure to build. To test for a leaking check valve, first close the bypass valve. Operate the handle. You should feel some resistance as the internal pressure of the hydraulic fluid increases and forces the floating piston against the sealant. In a properly operating handgun, the hose should stiffen as sealant is compressed by the floating piston. And the gauge should register an increase in pressure until the pressure relief valve releases. If the hose does not stiffen or the gauge does not register, the check valve may be faulty. A leaking check valve lets fluid from the sealant barrel flow back into the hydraulic pump cylinder and force the piston and handle outward. Even if pressure builds, the check valve may still be leaking. To confirm a faulty check valve, operate the handle a few strokes. If the handle rebounds from the handgun sealant barrel, the check valve is faulty. Stop operating the handgun and repair the check valve. First, open the bypass valve one half turn to relieve hydraulic pressure. Remove the sealant barrel cap. Remove the sealant either by pumping it out through the open end of the sealant barrel or by scraping it out. Be careful not to score the inside of the sealant barrel. Remove the handle, insert it into the sealant barrel, and press down against the floating piston until the floating piston has bottomed out. Now position the handgun on its side. Close the bypass valve. Remove the check valve assembly by unscrewing the retaining screw from the gun body and lifting or shaking out the assembly components. Be aware that hydraulic fluid may begin to leak as you loosen the retaining screw. The assembly consists of the retaining screw, a gasket, a spring, a stainless steel ball, and a filter screen. Clean the check valve ball seat in the body with a lint-free cloth. A lint-free cloth must be used to prevent foreign particles from further contaminating the ball and seat surfaces. Do not use compressed air to clean the check valve, because to do so might damage the ball and seat surfaces. Now reinsert the filter screen, the stainless steel ball, and the spring into the check valve chamber. Then replace and tighten the retaining screw and gasket. Some hydraulic fluid may have leaked out and some air may have entered the hydraulic system. So it's important to refill the hydraulic system with hydraulic fluid following the procedure described earlier. Then reload the sealant and reassemble the gun as described earlier. Close the bypass valve and operate the handgun. If the hose still does not stiffen or the gauge still does not register, the check valve is still leaking. Repeat the disassembly procedure. This time, re-clean the check valve seat and then carefully seat the stainless steel ball on the seat using a brass punch and hammer. Reassemble and retest the handgun. If the check valve still leaks, you need to replace the entire check valve assembly. Contact Nordstrom Valve's customer service. You should take care to prevent damage to the 400D handgun. Do not carry the handgun by its handle unless the handle is secured by the carrying strap. It's important to protect the gauge from damage and excessive vibration.
Various field procedures include using a slit tennis ball as a gauge cover or installing a carrying rack in your vehicle to secure the handgun while in transit. For more information on the operation of the 400D handgun, please consult Nordstrom Sealant and Sealant Equipment publications or video. The Nordstrom Hypergun is a sealant injection tool used for large-scale valve servicing in plants and in the field. In addition, the Hypergun serves as a diagnostic tool to determine if Nordstrom valves are functioning properly. The Hypergun simplifies the task of servicing a large number of Nordstrom valves in locations with a pressurized air supply. A pump driven by an air motor pressurizes the sealant and eliminates manual pumping. A 10-foot high-pressure hose makes it easier to connect the gun to valves being serviced. The Hypergun's large sealant capacity lets you work longer without having to refill the gun. And wheels, kickstands, and a handle make the Hypergun easy to move around. In the next few minutes, you'll learn to identify important parts of the Hypergun. How to prepare and use the gun to service Nordstrom valves in line and under pressure, and basic Hypergun maintenance and troubleshooting techniques. Note that Hyperguns typically require some assembly. They should be assembled according to the enclosed instructions before attempting to use them. Nordstrom sealant for the Hypergun comes in five quart cans. Nordstrom VPX valve purge, a liquid valve purge you will occasionally use during valve maintenance, also comes in five quart cans. The sealant can, placed inside a can shield, sits on the base plate. The cylinder above the can is the follower down tube assembly and pump body. It contains the sealant pump mechanism. Part of the mechanism helps transfer sealant from the can to the pump body where the sealant is pressurized. An air motor above the down tube assembly operates the pump. At the base of the down tube assembly is a flared plate called the follower plate. A flexible O-ring around the circumference fits tightly against the inside of the can. The follower down tube assembly and pump body are held in place by the yoke, the upper structural member of the hypergun. Twin pneumatic cylinders connecting the yoke and the base plate house air pistons that drive the follower plate into the sealant can. The follower plate acts like a piston to help force sealant up into the down tube assembly. The air supply connects to the hypergun through the air hose coupler on the yoke. A passage in the yoke feeds air to the ram needle valve, which regulates the flow of pressurized air to the pistons in the two cylinders between the yoke and the base plate. By regulating the airflow, the valve controls the movement of the air cylinder pistons. An air line from the yoke to the air motor powers the motor. A throttle valve in the line controls the flow to the air motor. An air pressure relief valve mounts on the yoke and limits the air pressure within the hypergun. This relief valve should not be modified in any way or property damage or personal injury or death may result. In the base plate, a restrictor L assembly and nipple connect the air supply to the bottom of the twin cylinders to raise the yoke assembly when replacing the sealant can. The restrictor L should not be removed or equipment damage and personal injury could result. A gauge mounted on the pump body monitors sealant pressure within the hypergun. A hose swivel connects the pump body to the high pressure hose. A valve screw in the pump body lets you relieve sealant pressure in the pump and hose. It can also let sealant flow back from the pump into the sealant can. A giant button head coupler links the hyper gun with the valve sealant fitting. A shut off relief valve at the end of the hose controls flow into the coupler. Here's how the hypergun works. The two pneumatic cylinders attached to the yoke 
drive the follower plate into the sealant can. This forces sealant into a conical recess on the bottom of the follower plate where the primer rod is located. The primer rod, driven by the air motor, pulls the sealant through the down tube assembly and into the pump body. The pressurized sealant is then forced out of the hose swivel into the high pressure hose. The air supply pressure must not exceed 125 PSIG or damage to internal parts may occur. Contaminated or wet air may damage internal parts of the hypergun. So the airline should have filters and water knockouts upstream of the hypergun. Here's how to load and replace sealant in the hypergun. Before you load sealant into the hypergun, you need to raise the follower plate. Remove the air supply from the connector on the yoke and open the ram needle valve three to four turns. This relieves the air pressure over the pistons in the pneumatic cylinders. Attach the air supply hose to the nipple located on the base plate of the hypergun. Air pressure under the pistons in the pneumatic cylinders raises the yoke assembly and follower plate. When the yoke and follower plate are fully raised, close the ram needle valve. Place a can shield around a five quart can of Nordstrom sealant, making sure that the seam of the can is opposite the shield snap closures. Now snap the shield closed. Open the can of sealant with a screwdriver. Next, use a clean putty knife or similar flat object to mound the sealant in the center of the can. This will help prevent air from being trapped between the follower plate and sealant. Be careful not to introduce any contaminants or damage to internal parts may occur. Place the can into the hypergun, making sure the bottom rim of the can is properly positioned in the can guide groove on the base plate. Remove the air supply hose from the base plate nipple to relieve the air pressure under the cylinder pistons. Keep the nipple faced away from you and other people. Blowback through the nipple could result in property damage or personal injury or death. Spread a small amount of sealant on the follower plate O-ring to prime it for initial use, or if the O-ring appears dry. Now you're ready to lower the follower plate into the sealant can. Open the valve screw located opposite the gauge in the pump body. Turn the valve screw at least three to four revolutions. Make sure the throttle valve is closed. And then open the sealant relief valve on the pump body. The relief valve vents air and sealant from the system. Attach the air supply hose to the nipple located on the yoke. Now gradually open the ram needle valve and allow the air pressure to slowly lower the follower plate into the can of sealant. Make sure the follower plate avoids contact with the top edges of the sealant can. Otherwise, the can will bend, making it difficult to insert the follower plate into the can. Also, make sure that the O-ring seal on the circumference of the follower plate is not damaged as the follower plate enters the can. Once the follower plate enters the can, Open the ram needle valve three to four turns to allow the follower plate to make contact with the sealant. Before operating the gun, any trapped air between the follower plate and the sealant, as well as any air in the entire system, must be purged. To accomplish this, open the throttle valve to start the air motor. The air motor will operate the pump mechanism and exhaust air through the relief valve fitting. Hold a small container in front of the relief valve fitting to catch sealant which will be pumped out during the purging process. 
If the sealant does not appear at the relief valve fitting, remove the valve screw. This allows larger pockets of air to be purged from the system. Sealant should eventually be pumped through the valve screw orifice. When it appears, close the throttle valve and replace the valve screw, leaving the valve screw open. Then open the throttle valve again to restart the pump. When a steady stream of sealant with no air pockets is being expelled from the relief valve fitting, the system has been purged of air. Close the throttle valve. The relief valve. And the valve screw. The next step is to fill the high pressure hose with sealant. Remove the button head coupler from the hose with a wrench. Or attach a spare sealant fitting to the button head coupler. With the shut off relief valve behind the button head coupler closed, open the throttle valve. The gauge should begin to register as sealant is pumped into the hose. Open the shut off relief valve on the hose to allow sealant or air to escape. To prevent possible personal injury, point the hose or the sealant fitting in the button head coupler away from your body. When the hose has been purged of air, sealant will begin to exit the hose or the sealant fitting. At this point, close the hose shut off relief valve. When this valve is closed, gauge pressure should rise until the air motor stalls. Close the throttle valve, cutting the air supply to the motor. Depending on how you purged the hose, now remove the sealant fitting from the button head coupler or reattach the button head coupler. The hyper gun is now ready for use in servicing valves. To use the hyper gun to lubricate valves in line and under pressure, Attach the air supply to the air coupler on the hypergun yoke. Attach the giant button head coupler on the hypergun hose to the valve sealant fitting. Slide the coupler completely onto the fitting by rocking up and down. Do not use a left to right motion because the coupler may not slide completely onto the fitting. Make sure the valve screw is closed. Open the throttle valve the hyper gun will begin to operate. Open the hose shut off relief valve. Sealant will begin to flow through the hose, button head coupler, and valve sealant fitting into the valve. As you inject sealant, observe the gauge. If the valve is operating properly, the hyper gun gauge needle should rise and slightly fall as sealant is injected into the valve. Eventually, the gauge needle will reach a plateau. When the valve sealant chamber has filled with sealant, an additional rise in pressure from this plateau will occur until the plug is finally moved off its seat. At this point, which varies from valve to valve, the gauge needle will begin to fall back. This signals that the valve is full of sealant and the plug has been moved off the taper as per Pascal's law. As you monitor the gauge for pressure changes, also listen to the air motor. 
the air motor will begin to operate slower as the sealant system pressure increases. At the point the air motor begins to operate faster, the sealant has moved the plug out of the taper. Once the plug has been moved out of the taper, further injection of sealant will only force excess sealant into the piping system. Close the coupler shutoff relief valve. Now check the valve for proper operation. If you're satisfied that the valve is operating properly, remove the giant button head coupler from the valve sealant fitting and proceed to the next valve. If there are no more valves to service, disconnect the air supply from the unit. At some point during the valve servicing process, the pressure reading on the gauge will begin to fall back to zero. The air motor will begin to pump faster. And the yoke will almost make contact with the cylinders. These conditions signal that all the sealant has been pumped from the five quart can. You need to stop operating the hypergun and install a new can of sealant. First, open the valve screw. Then open the relief valve. Remove the air supply hose from the yoke nipple and attach it to the base plate nipple. The follower plate, sealant can, and yoke assembly will immediately begin to rise. When the yoke and follower plate have fully risen, close the ram needle valve. Attach the air supply hose to the relief valve fitting that is used to purge the system. Pressurized air will pass down the relief lines and force the can from the follower plate. When the can becomes cocked and you hear air exiting the can, disconnect the air supply. Then remove the can from the follower plate. Use the rim of the can to remove excess sealant clinging to the follower plate. Remove the can shield and attach it to a new can of sealant. Follow procedures as previously described for installation of a five-quart can of sealant into the hypergun. Sometimes it's necessary to purge any sealant that remains in the system. Incompatibility between the previous sealant and the new sealant, the presence of valve purge or valve design considerations such as pressure, temperature, or line media may make this necessary. To purge sealant, use the same procedures you use to fill the high-pressure hose with sealant. The most common problem encountered when using the hypergun is an inability to develop pressure. There are a number of situations which might cause this problem. The first possibility is that the valve screw is not seated properly. Check to see that the valve screw is firmly hand-tightened. Air trapped in the system might also prevent you from being able to generate pressure. Purge the air from the hypergun using the method you used when loading sealant. If the giant button head coupler is leaking, pressure cannot be generated. Leakage of sealant may occur between the button head coupler and sealant fitting as you inject sealant into the valve. This leakage may come from either the coupler or the fitting. To determine which part is leaking, first remove the button head coupler from the sealant fitting. Then open the hose shutoff relief valve and operate the hypergun. Pressure should build to the point that the air motor stalls. If the air motor does not build pressure and or stall, the coupler is leaking. A Nordstrom repair kit may be obtained from your local Nordstrom authorized distributor. Carefully examine the sealant port on the button head coupler for leakage. If there is leakage, the coupler's O-ring seal is defective and should be replaced. If there is no leakage, the valve sealant fitting is defective and should be replaced. 
The final probable cause of an inability to generate pressure is a loose primer body. To tighten the primer body, you must first remove the sealant can. Then tighten the primer body using the primer body slot under the follower plate. Reload the sealant can and purge the system of air as previously described. If the pressure problem continues to exist, contact Nordstrom valves for additional assistance. For more detailed information on the operation of the Nordstrom Hypergun, please consult Nordstrom Sealant and Sealant Equipment Publications. This video was produced in 1992 by Nordstrom Valves Incorporated. In 2002, FlowServe Corporation acquired Nordstrom Valves through the purchase of the Flow Control Division of Invensys PLC. At that time, Nordstrom Valves, located in Sulphur Springs, Texas, was renamed FlowServe Sulphur Springs Operations. This facility continues to manufacture the same high-quality product, known today as FlowServe Nordstrom Valves. This video continues to address many of the lubricated plug valve and sealant injection products manufactured by FlowServe Sulphur Springs Operations. However, some product may have been modified or new product introduced that is not included. FlowServe Corporation reserves the right to make product modifications that may contradict the contents of this video without notification to its holders. This video is intended as a guide for educational and training purposes only. If the FlowServe Nordstrom Valves product you require troubleshooting and maintenance information on is not included in this video, or if anything in this video is unclear to you, please contact your local FlowServe Nordstrom Valves representative for assistance. Before using or working on any FlowServe Nordstrom Valve or other product, the viewer should review and fully comply with the FlowServe Nordstrom maintenance and instruction manuals prepared for each FlowServe Nordstrom valve and to its warning labels and with the viewer's company safety procedures. FlowServe Corporation and its associates cannot be held responsible for any information that is found to be inaccurate or incomplete and are in no way responsible for damage to property or for personal injury or death which may result through the use or misuse of any FlowServe Nordstrom product publication, audio or visual aids.